and welcome to Arabesque. Today I'm at Asia House in London on this sunny July morning and I'm going to be heading back into the classroom. I'll be sitting in on a calligraphy writing class and also testing my Arabic speaking. We're here to strip it all back, find out the history behind and test my skills. I would like to, to say something about the Arabic calligraphy. Uh, I didn't learn it when I was young. Uh, I learned it when I was old, after I finished my uh, uh, high studies. I was studying stage design and became a designer for the National Theater. Cairo and uh, it came that uh, I was doing uh, a decoration, a set for a uh, stage uh, to talk about one of the great calligraphers. I didn't know anything about him and I started to read about him and I loved what he did. That man was Ibn Mukhla. It seems for me, uh, it's uh, a great man to put the rules of the Arabic calligraphy, uh, which we're seeing it today. Before Ibn Mukhla, there was no what's so called Arabic calligraphy uh, based on certain rules, as he did. He looked to nature and took his inspirations inspired by nature and took his rules from nature really and he discovered or he put really something called the proportional script the theory of Ibn Mukhla is the theory of the proportional script uh, and from that and the dots as a measure he open the door for all what's so called these days the cursive script. I started teaching myself and joined a school of Arabic calligraphy. That's what makes me uh, engaged in Arabic calligraphy. And then because of my previous studies and love to art and stage and colors, I using, I'm using these days, this, all these uh, advantages to make my own art. Uh, I'm teaching uh, for three, four years now in uh, SOAS. Uh, School of Oriental and African Studies in Russell Square here, London University. I'm teaching Arabic calligraphy. Uh, and uh, the results, it's amazing. You see people would like to know why they love this uh, Arabic calligraphy without even knowing how to read Arabic. And when they hear about the history and uh, where from, what so called these uh, rules of Arabic calligraphy. It's based on the rules of the creator in man, in trees, in the universe. They know why it looks beauty in their eyes. Exactly like when you see a lovely animal, the sunset scenes, the, the birds, the rules in all these creatures is the rules which Ibn Mukhla was using it to put, to create these shapes of Arabic uh, letter forms. The Arabic calligraphy, it's, um, it's many styles. Uh, the most famous styles 
which is being using, used today is Nesk and Tholos and Diwani and Nastalik, which is Persian, they call it Persian or Nastalik, Nastalik. Uh, uh, the Kufic, the square Kufic, which is being used at the beginning of uh, writing, but they're still using it today uh, as a decorative uh, uh, style, and they're using it in, especially in logos and uh, trademarks and all that. The dot is a measure. The dot of your pen is the measure for the length of the letter. This is Aleph in Thuluth, Aleph in Nasr, Aleph in Persian style, or Mastalik, Aleph in Riqa, Aleph in Diwani style. When it comes to writing uh, adjoining letters, Let's uh, write, for instance, Elias. Elias, it's Aleph. It's a name of a prophet, by the way. But look at that. It's Aleph. Lam. Yeah. That's Elias. That's in Diwani style. And if we take other name like Elena. This is the tools. It's a reed bin and it has a certain cut for different styles, there's a certain cuts, different degrees. And uh, you will learn that if you join a school of uh, Arabic calligraphy or you join a course in any schools. Class. It's really fascinating to learn the details behind calligraphy and to see how much effort goes into it because it looks so simple on paper. Um, it's also quite interesting as well. Um, I never realized about the dots and it being compared to the human form. Um, and it's quite elegant, um, it's quite challenging. <laughs> It looks really easy, but actually doing it in the class, I'm realizing that writing an aleph is not as easy as it looks. <laughs> class was very interesting. Um, I am Arab myself, and I found that he really brought me the language in a very new light. Um, we're used to writing, but I never perceived it as a form of art. And today, um, he gave us a bit of historical context. Um, he showed us what the meaning of each letter is and where it actually comes from and how it's all very mathematical and scientific. So I found that to be very interesting, that it's both scientific and a form of art. Arabic had taken so long to develop into the language that we know now. 
and um, it's it was at once like really artistic but also very informative and um, learned learned a lot from it even in two hours. Uh, and Mustafa is very very talented and really approachable. And um, yeah, I didn't think I would be able to actually write a few letters and eventually my name in, yeah. in such a short time. So it was great. workshop and I must say it's actually not as easy as you might think. There is definitely a fine art to calligraphy and apparently it takes at least three years to perfect and I can definitely see why. This is my attempt, not brilliant but at least we gave it a go. I've been Leah and I'll see you next time.